Hi, so uh, I looked out the window this morning and thought the light looked pretty fantastic. It's changing rapidly and I might get halfway up the hill and get rained on severely or battered by the wind, but I thought I'd give it a try because there's lots of breaks in the cloud and we might just get some fantastic light when we need it. So we'll see, we've got to try these things. So this is uh, Robinswood Hill. We've had weeks and weeks of rain, so well, anytime you do something like this, I strongly suggest you get some really good waterproof boots. This is uh, like a bog. Find an alternative way. And I've brought my tripod, so I've got quite a lot to hold. This probably looks really stupid. Anyway, I'll speak to you later. Make sure there's no golfers about to swing. We do without concussion this morning. We're headed up here. It's all uphill, guys. Good job, I'm so unfit. Not really uh, flat light at the moment. Hoping we get to the top and something wonderful will happen, but it might not. You have to make the effort, or you don't get anything special. Got my uh, photographer's gloves on. These are good. You can find them on eBay. Got grippy bits underneath. They might not look very cool, but uh, they work. That just seconds later, we had a sudden burst of sunlight through the trees, which looked fantastic. Here it comes again. So we may get really lucky. Looking good. And of course, at this time of year, uh, it's February, um, the sun is low, which gives wonderful shadows. Do I really want to try and run half a marathon this year? I could have stopped and maybe made a shot here, um, but I've had my eye on a, another spot for a while. Uh, this is where it benefits you to take walks often so you get to know the area. Um, you can come back to a spot when you think the light will be right. So that's what we're doing. So I really do like this area and these trees. I've never managed to get a shot that I'm really happy with here. But I'm going to give it a try today. I've got my tripod. I've got a neutral density filter. To see if I can do something more interesting with the sky. Now, looking at this sensibly, there's too much wind. We really don't want movement in the branches. So if I use a long exposure and a neutral density filter, uh, the branches would be blurred. So I might have to scrap that plan. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what I can come up with. I'm still currently looking for the right shot. Um, this looks like it could be really dramatic. Uh, neutral density is out because of the wind, so I'm just going to maybe try an HDR. Uh, same problem is going to happen, but um, must be something we can do here. What I really want is to not break the line of that tree on the right, so I've got to find my angle. Could be about there, but I really want to get that foreground interest in of this lovely trunk. So, I might just have to get really low. So, with the trunk in the left part of the frame, I need to change my. I don't know if that's going to focus. 
and I need to change my focus point to the far left. So I'm back at home now. I was incredibly lucky. The second I got back in the car, um, it started to empty down with rain again. Um, so I'm home, I'm dry, uh, and I've brought the shots into Lightroom. This, although I was waiting for a break in the clouds, and I did get one briefly, uh, got some lovely um, golden light on this trunk, in actual fact, it, it gave me just too much of a range of tones to deal with. Um, I can show you, it looks quite dramatic. Um, it would be... There's a lighter version. And obviously we can we can rescue the highlight in the, uh, in the sky and so on. But eventually I thought that a slightly flatter one would be easier to work with. Um, it might sound crazy to some, but anyway, so this was the the optimum position I could get where these twigs didn't cross the line of that tree, which gives a much cleaner looking image. I did eventually also break the twig that was sticking out of here, a bit naughty, but um, uh, a landscaper would have done that. It's quite good for the tree, sends the energy to where it's actually needed instead of a an offshoot that shouldn't really be there. That's my excuse anyway. Um, I would have liked to have been able to get further back but because of the way the land lay um, it wasn't possible to do that and still maintain this space around the tops of these trees. So I've ended up not having quite as much of this sort of context detail you might call it around the bottom of the tree but um, it's, it's a composition and when you bring back the detail in the sky. You see it's a really lovely dramatic sky. So let's let's talk about how we do that. Um, I'm using a, a new process by a guy called, well, Guy Gowan. Um, and I'll show you that in Photoshop in a moment. But what he suggests first of all is to get a shot that's slightly overexposed. So in other, in other words this sky, the detail is washed out at the moment but we've got enough detail in the foreground. Uh, incidentally I used F22 and a tripod as you saw so that we could get the foreground and the background in focus as much as possible anyway. So Guy suggests that instead of the current 2012 process we go to a 2010 process um, I'll let him explain why, because he'll do a much better job than I ever would. Just go to guygowan.com and you join up. There's some wonderful tutorials on there. He goes into great depth and uh, you learn a lot every time. He suggests take all the blacks off so that we, we haven't got any sort of artificially added um, darks that we don't want. The only other thing I would do, if I zoom in here, you can see where the edges are. There's a little bit of red fringing. That's chromatic aberration. We go down to the lens correction, and click remove. See how it just took that away? I just turn it off, red fringe, turn it on, it's just tilled that back nicely. And that is almost ready to open. Now rather than use these recovery tools, which can sort of bring back some detail in the highlights, Guy suggests we simply use the exposure. He would tell me off for not being precise, so we go minus two on the exposure. And you might think, well, obviously the rest of the image is 
is useless, but um, <laughs> you haven't tried his process yet. So we've got lots of detail in the sky. Certainly as much highlight detail, detail as I need, there's, there's nothing blown out. So it's all there. Now, unbelievably, that's what we open up in Photoshop. I let Guy Gowan's Process 7 work its magic. We'll just give that a moment to wake up. Here it comes. Okay, drag that down into its own window so we can see the whole. Maybe we can't. So see the whole picture. You may be used to seeing the actions palette look like this. So just click here, go to button mode. Once you've downloaded Guy's Actions, we're going to go to his latest one, Process Version 7. I'm using Photoshop CC, so there's a CC version, but you can also have a non-CC version. Now, we took it down by two exposure values. So we're going to click on that. It's going to churn through all kinds of things, again, which you can find out all about at guygowan.com. But essentially, it's going to bring back the shadow detail that we lost when we rescued the highlight detail. But it will preserve the highlight detail. Guy refers to this as an upgrade to your camera because it gives you all the dynamic range that you see with your eyes that the camera can't usually cope with. And for photographers, it's a marvellous tool. Takes a while to churn through it all. There you go. So we've we've now brought back plenty of shadow detail in the tree, and we can still see without any blowing out all the highlight detail in the sky. Excuse my ineptitude there with the zooming. Right. So we've, we've got lots and lots to work with here. Um, that's just by clicking one button. So we can now, we need to choose landscape mode. Again, I'll, I'll let Guy explain why. You can choose, if you've got a lot of detail in the darker end of your histogram, you can click the low key button. Um, I actually think We'll click the high key button and bring back that highlight detail a little more. Now we have control individually over highlights, mid-tones and shadow area. So if we now want to make it more contrasty, we can add 10% shadows. Straight away that beefs up the, the shadows. Um, we've started to lose some of the tree there, so let's go up 10 on that in the mid-tone maybe possibly take the highlight detail back just one that's down one that's down one more you can see it's just brought back a bit more highlight detail so we're going to leave it you can take them all the way to zero but we do want it to we do want the whites to be really white maybe just more in the mid tone, a bit more shadow. So we've made it more punchy, contrasty. Um, and then these clean buttons, these are actually um, ways of boosting the color. Going for a hundred percent there. It's a bit strong in the sky, but in actual fact, I'm going to turn this into a mono shot eventually. I'm not touching the boost. Sharpen. I tend to go for the lowest. Um, lowest amount of. Let's see if I actually let me zoom it to 100%. Okay, now you can see that's done a pretty wonderful job.
and sharpening which is one of the many wonderful features about this action and because I was on F22 you can see there are some little dust spots there which would be more pronounced at F22 I really don't want to do that move the layer I was on okay but the sharpening is, is amazing frankly the detail looks very real right so we have shadow detail we have highlight detail I do wonder whether I should knock back the uh, shadow detail a little bit oh, I like that it was a, it was a a dark day, let's say. The weather was dramatic but heavy. Right. That was before. That's the amount of detail and punch that this action has brought back. I'm just going to flatten that. What I want to do now is make the uh, the detail in the sky a bit more evident. Another of Guy's actions is called the detail action. Just click once. The, um, the default is to just bring back detail in the highlights, which is the H layer. If you do it to all, kind of too much for this image. We just want to bring the detail of that sky and make it as dramatic as possible. If I go with 90% the highlight detail, turn that off and on again. You see how it's just brought more contrast to those clouds. I'm going to flatten that. I'm tempted to do it again. Another great thing with these is you can just keep layering up the effect to your heart's content. And just for fun, go with 90%. So we've got a really dramatic um, sky. Now, if we want to make more of this grass, for example, we can just click process 7 again, not plus 2 exposure value this time, just the basic process 7. And that will give us all that control over the various components of the image again. have a much bigger screen can you tell <laughs> sorry about that okay so we still have all the highlight detail but what I want to do is get much greener grass even a hundred percent so it's cleaned up the colors it's too strong in the sky obviously um, but that's going to become mono. It just I thought it helped make the grass, the luminosity of the grass, a bit stronger. If we open up this list, we don't need to sharpen it twice. So take the sharpen layer off completely. We also don't need any boost. Interesting to take the highlight detail back a bit which helps give it a little more definition in the cloud okay good okay now once you collapse that into its own group again there's nothing to stop us adding a layer mask 
and painting over the bits that we don't want affected by the process. So I've just painted out where it's made the sky too blue. Good. That's in the image. Let me take this out of the way. Okay, so there are areas down here that I'd still like to show a little more. This is all quite dark here. So use uh, a more traditional method. Duplicate the layer. I dragged the layer to the uh, new layer icon there. I could have just hit Command J. Um, I'll now go to Screen. You can see here's some of the detail that I wanted to bring back in these dark leaves down here but I only want it to affect the areas I choose. So, Alt click to make a layer mask which is black, which hides the effect I just created. But now if I paint white where I want to show the effect, that will reveal the effect. Obviously this is a little strong, but we'll uh, change the opacity. Bring that detail here. This, this area here. So just go right along the bottom actually. You can kind of sculpt the light to some degree. Now if I bring the opacity of that layer down to maybe 50% or thereabouts before after maybe take it down to 40 ish. Okay. That in the layer. Now I do want to take out this which I think just confuses the image a little bit. This tool can be a little bit hit and miss. We might be better off using a lasso or a lasso tool. So let's pick these up. Field, content aware. Almost. Right, let's pick up a spot healing brush. Just go over the bits that some sense of just there. Take a closer look. That's pretty much dealt with it. Straight away to me that gives a more clean looking image. Um, at this point, while well, we've got our spot tool open, just look around for a few sensor spots and clean those up. The sensor is pretty clean, it has to be because I do a lot of weddings. I think that should do us. So, there's our colour version of the image. So, we can convert it to black and white. There's lots and lots of ways to do this. One way would be let's just save this before we go on. Image adjustments, black and white. 
which gives us control over the various areas. You may well be familiar with this. But I don't want to use that method. What I'm going to do, now that it's saved back into Lightroom, this is not usually recommended, but if I take the saturation button down, and just see what I have, my range of tones, I start to play with the clarity, bring back heaps of detail. See, I really like what that does to the sky. So I might open the image twice. In fact, let's take that back. And let's duplicate the image. Command apostrophe. That gives us a virtual copy. So the first copy, we take the saturation off. Whack that clarity all the way up. With the second copy, just take the saturation off. Now I can highlight both of these, edit as layers in Photoshop. Here we go. So we have both versions of the Lightroom image um, in the layer stack. So I can turn that one off. That's the one without any clarity added. That's the one with the clarity added. What I'm going to do is move that to the top of the layer stack. So I've got the detail underneath. I brush in detail where I want it. I think that's a better method. So now, brush in all the cloud detail. Take the opacity down to about 50 and just bring a little bit back. I want some more drama. I think that's a better method. Before, after. This tree bothers me. So. Let's see if I can remove it cleanly. There it was, gone. Clean that. And then my little old trick with the curves layer again, just click on auto and see how much extra range it thinks you can put in. So it's well over the top. I'm sure I haven't lost the highlight detail. It's not blown out. Let's 
save. Now I'm also noticing where that branch mysteriously got broken off that this stump is showing. That looks cleaner. Um, also slightly distracted by a few little highlights in the foreground. Just don't want my eye to be drawn quite so much from those. That's a personal thing. It's not really something you need to worry about, but some highlight I like and others um, just pulls my eye away from where I want it to be. Um, and we haven't really done any proper dodging and burning yet, so you could go to town on that just to maybe... In fact, let's do that. I think that this grass could have more shape with a little um, careful work. So, command J. Duplicate the layer. Let's go to multiply. <laughs> Ferocious. Take the opacity down. Alt, click on the layer mask, and now we can just brush in a bit more shadow where we want it. Let's take the opacity down to 20 ish. So, a bit more darkness there. See how we can just sort of paint the contours onto it with this method. A little more punch here. And then we do another layer. This time the, op <coughs> the opposite, so screen. This is to create some more highlights where we want them. Alt click on the layer mask to hide it and then paint it in where we want it. So I'd like that to be just a channel running down there. So we have more depth. Just change it, the paintbrush to black and go over where I didn't mean to paint. Back to white again. Accentuate this the highlights here, bring back a little more detail in these dark leaves. Maybe just bring more shape to the trunk. They still need to be dark, don't they? And there you go, you can carry on fiddling as much as you like, obviously, but uh, you've got a pretty dramatic image. Um, and we'll stop there, I think, because this has gone on a very long time. If you stuck with me, thanks for your patience. Um, I hope you find something in this that's useful to you. Okay, see you next time.